you should know that may, uh, you should maybe for some uh, uh, some people who attend this uh, training, they she have already have the working experience, so she will uh, she would all oh, he will know what is the procedure of the network migration and uh, what we will do in the network migration and uh, what we need to prepare for the network migration. But uh, for some uh, some people who attend this training, attend the uh, did come HCIE did come training. Maybe her is a student. She don't have any experience about uh, the real uh, work life uh, of network engineer. But uh, for a network engineer, you should know that uh, network migration is one thing that she must uh, or her master experienced. Uh, if uh, after her, her after uh, she graduated and attended the, the working, so I think. Uh, it is uh, necessary for her or for she to know what is net migration and what we will do in net migration and what is a proper procedure for the network migration. Now let's look at uh, this. Wait a moment. Now let's look at what is the network migration. Uh, you should know that with the development of enterprise service, the uh, enterprise network needed to be reconstructed and optimized to meet the service requirement. Sometimes it's not uh, reconstructed, uh, it's maybe just uh, enlarged or optimized. For example, so sometimes the IPv4 networks needed to be upgraded to IPv6 networks, and uh, or maybe the SIS levels need to be modified, or sometimes just for an enterprise network or for the campus network, you maybe you just need to uh, add some access service, uh, access switches, or just to add some other device. And uh, maybe sometimes you need to uh, change your VPN architectures. Regardless of the hardware capabilities expansions or the software, Upgrade and the configuration changes. Enterprise formulated a strict operation process and risk mitigation measures based on survey security levels requirement for operations that affect the service on the live networks. And we will define those operations as migration project. And maybe for students, they should know that what is the most important things for network migrations? It should be the risk mitigation measures and uh, what is the process or procedures. That is the most important things for network migrations. It is not uh, your uh, level of uh, technical. It is uh, your mind about what is proper process and what is the risk for the network migration. So in this course, uh, we will introduce uh, what is the proper migration process and uh, what operation since we need to do and what is the risk and how to control the risk during the network migration. Okay, so for the student, uh, what is the aim or what is the objective for them? The first one should be, they should clarify the procedure and the specification of the migrations and uh, maybe he held uh, uh, maybe her uh, should have a mind about uh, what is uh, the common migration scenarios. Okay, so first uh, let's look at what is uh, the concept of migration. First, uh, let's look at what is uh, the definition of migrations. Uh, if the if the technical migration is performed on the network will affect the service running on the left networks, strictly compile with the preset operation process and risk control methods during the implementation of the technical migration project. Generally, the, the, the type of project is defined as migration project. So you will find that first, we need to uh, strictly compile with the uh, proset operations process. You, it means we need to uh, plan the operation process uh, at once, and uh, we need to control the risk. 
So what project what project will be defined as the migration project? The first one maybe it is a cap uh, capacity expansions or the uh, networks reconstructions or you need all you need to replace a device. For example, so for the traditional network, maybe you just use uh, AR routers to function as the egress device. But uh, maybe you complains, uh, you complains, uh, expand, expand, and uh, maybe you will face more risk from the internet. So you want to change your egress device from the AR routers to firewalls. So. This is a replacement, and uh, you can define this action as migration project. And the last, uh, it will be change. So what change? Maybe it is a topology change in physical, or it is just a topology change in logical. All those things can be defined as migration. And uh, let's look at uh, what is the common migration scenarios. The first is the network capacity expansions, for example, so for before, for the core switch and uh, aggregator switches, we only have one switches. So maybe you should know that it is a uh, one a uh, single point uh, fault. Maybe it 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 is possible for the network to occur the single point uh, faults. Uh, so how to solve this? Maybe we can just add a new device for the core switches. We add a new Call switch and for the greater switch, we add another greater switch. And you can you can find that in this network, we need to add a new device and we need to add new links between those devices. And maybe you can you you can deploy new technologies. For example, so you can deploy stack or the CSS just to improve the uh just to improve the high ability for the network, right? And uh, another scenario for the network migrations, it is the network re reconstructions. For example, for the network egress device, before we only have one link to the internet, and this link is uh, offered by the ISP1. But we need to improve our uh, uh, was our abilities for the egress device. So maybe we need to uh, uh, we need to uh, purchase another link from another space. So if one link downs and another links that are offered by another space will work. And uh, the third uh, scenario is about the network conversions uh, migration. It is the device replacement. And I've already mentioned it before, change the egress device from the AI routers to the firewalls. And uh, I think, uh, I don't know what, uh, uh, what uh, uh, if it is common things uh, in your countries, but now in China, these things be just become common, just because uh, I think you have already heard so many news about uh, the network attacks. And uh, the result is maybe the company lost uh, the imported data, so all the data so will be uh, will be equipped by the attackers and you need to pay for it to release it. So now in China, more and more companies will pay more attention to the network securities and uh, the cheapest way is to use the firewall to just uh, put on the egress device. And another, the last one, it should be the configuration change. Configuration change, maybe it will be a logical topology change. For example, for we change the ISP, ISTP protocol from the ISP version to MSTP. And uh, by using MSTP, maybe we can do a lot of balance for the traffic from the users, from the terminals. So for example, for subnet one, we can set, we can set its gateway on this device, but for subnet two, we can set its gateway in this place. Just just to combine the, the MPS technologies with VIP technologies, we can achieve this. So you will find that 
the physical topology is not changed, but the logical topology have already changed for different uh, subnetics users, the gateway changed. Now let's look at what is the process of migration. For migrations, we have three uh, first uh, phases. The first one is the preparation, and uh, the first two is the implantation. And uh, for the last phase is the closing. And uh, maybe the student will think the most important uh, phase is the phase two, the deployment. But uh, actually, if you have the experience about uh, the migrations, you know that uh, the phase one, it is the most important uh, phase, important part. You need to just uh, plan everything and uh, find all the risk and uh, check every point about, uh, for example, about uh, every command or about uh, the migrations. So with a uh, good uh, preparations in phase one, so your phase two will be much easier if you do less in phase one and maybe you need to meet more difficulties in phase two. So just uh, a good preparation and uh, you will have uh, easy deployment. So you will find that in the phase one, we should know what we need to do in the phase one. Okay, and you will find that uh, we can have those step for the phase one. For example, the project survey, you need to learn why we need to do this project, what is the aim of your customers or you, uh, or your companies. And then we need to analyze it. And maybe in the analyze, you will find some risk and uh, how to solve the risk. Maybe you need to uh, look, the helps, look the helps from your uh, companies from all from the network of vendors. And then you need to uh, output your migration solutions. And uh, actually the solution should be very detailed. And then if you have the chance, you should to uh, verify your solutions. And uh, at last, you need to prepare for your migrations. So for example, so you, need to, you need to prepare the, uh, the shell for the scribe for your migrations and all the things that you need for the migration. And what we need to do in phase two, it is you need to, before you migrations, you need to do a snapshot before the migrations. So that if the migrations fails, you can just restore all the network as soon as possible. And then before the snapshot is done, you can do your deployment about the migrations. And if it fails, and actually, so we will have a ten point. Just uh, if the time have already exceeded the ten point, and uh, the migration is not done, and all we have already verified the result of the migration, and we find that the migration is failed, then we need to do the rule bike. And actually, so for the rule bike, we should design and prepare how to rule bike in the phase one. At least it is the migration test and check. And uh, for some scenarios, for example, so for the service providers, uh, sometimes they will ask you to offer the phase three. It is the observation after the uh, after the migrations. And uh, now let's look at what is the uh, migration process for detail. The first one is the preparation phase. And uh, the first is we need to do an investigation about the project. Before the migration, we need to communication with the customs network. Maybe it, is, maybe it is the network information owner, maybe it is the frontline maintenance engineers, maybe it is the ISP technical contact persons. Whatever, it depends on who is your customer of the migration for this project? And uh, sometimes, if your migration is more uh, is very important, maybe you need to uh, seek for help from the device vendor, and uh, 
sometimes it's very important. And what things we need to do, we need we what we should get in for this uh projects in investigation, for example, is you need to select uh, collect some static information and uh, or some dynamic information, and uh, maybe you need to learn about uh, the customs survey and. Uh, or sometimes, for example, for example, for example, if this uh, this migration project is a network uh, device change, maybe you change the device from the uh, the an old old device to a new new device. What thing you need to consider about it? Maybe you if you don't have any experience, you will think it is will change things. Just like change the device, but a lot of things you need to change. You can say about it. For example, so what is the type of the cable? It is the fiber or just the oh uh, uh uh or the optical uh, optical cable, right? For example, so for the customers, it, they only or the old device only have the the old device and the new device. They have the different type of the cable. And you can say about it. And for example, so what is the type of the power? And you can say about it. And uh, for the old device and the new device, what is the uh, how how much uh, uh, how much room they will uh, they will uh, they will uh, they will occupy uh, occupy it? For example, so for the old device, it only used one you. Uh, when you room and for the for a new device you need to use two you dev uh two you rooms so if you don't uh just uh, consider about it maybe when you go to do the migrations you will find that there is no more rooms for you to put the new device into the rank so you can consider about it and uh, now let's look at uh, what is the what uh what information we need to collect and uh, for example so we have already said we need to collect the static information and the dynamic information what is the static information for example so the topology information what is the physical topology and what is the logical topology for the logical topologies you by uh by the logical Topologies, you can know some things about the service. And what is the device type? If they have any license, and if they some functions needed the license, and you need to collect the device configuration, what is the version for the device? For example, for some features, only the uh, new version supported. So the device versions is one thing that you need to be concerned. And what is the interface type? For example, as I have already said, for the LPU, you shall know that we have different type to support different cables. You need to consider about it. And what is the dynamic information you need to consider about it? For example, how much the network traffic is and what traffic will come across your device and what is the, what is the state about your protocols? For example, if you want to do a migration about the OSPF, you shall know that before, if uh, it just is, just you shall know that after the migrations and uh, before the migrations, how many pair, how many pairs, uh, it will exist for this device. So you can check it after the migration if the OSPF state is right, and. Uh, Protocol entries, for example, the routine table, routine entries. You shall know that before the migrations and after migrations, if the protocol entries is right, if it is, if it is followed, you designed. And uh, for example, so for some service, the JIT and uh, latency is as as we planned. And uh, for the packet loss rate, it is the same if it meet the service requirement. You should know know all know that uh, so you have so uh, you have the efficient you have the uh, you have the enough information to judgment if the migration is a success and what point needed to be uh, take uh, take enough notice before the migrations and during the migration.
for example, also we need to know that what is the traffic model, right? For example, the web topology, so you should know that for this device, what type of traffic will pass through it and how much traffic it will be. All the things you need to consider about it. Otherwise, you don't know why after the migrations, the server is failed. Just because you don't know, you don't know before the migrations, what is the path of the uh, survey? What uh, is the function of all the devices that, that this survey will pass through? You shall don't know that. And I think the result is the migration must be much failed. And uh, the last one is, is observing the hardware environment on the left network, just like what I said before. So you need to consider about it, the optical fiber interface connections. What is the interface ID? Is all the things you can say about it. Just because you need to uh, you need to you need to make sure that all the things will be properly if when during your migration. And after the you collect some information from the customers, and uh, and then you should to do a project analysis. After the project survey. Uh, survey is to complete, analyze the customer's new requirement on the network after the migration, such as the bandwidth, network KPIs, and the new survey bearing capabilities. All the things need to be considered. In addition, clarify the migration change requirement in the migration is in this phase. And I think in, maybe you need to output the customer requirement analyze form. And then it is an important phase. It is the risk assessment. Sometimes maybe you shall know that you shall know what is the risk for the deployment for the migration. For example, you need to change the old device to a new device. You shall know that what is the what is what is the feature of the new device, and if this feature in this scenario is we need to notice some new point that it will not that we don't consider in the old environment. And uh, sometimes, for example, you need to deploy a new technologies for in the in custom scenarios, and you don't know too much about the new technologies or the new features. Maybe you need must sell for help from the vendors or from your uh, your uh, your workmate. So just uh, analyze and evaluate migration risk. And sometimes uh, you just uh, don't know that it is a risk, just like what I said before. You don't, you don't know these features. You just think this feature is the uh, same features and you don't know the limitation of these features. So you will not uh, know there are some risks. So sometimes uh, analyze and uh, evaluate it just uh, with your workmates or with other experienced people. And they can tell you what is the risk. And we need to evaluate risk based on the survey result, requirement analyze result, and cut over solution framework, formulate uh, countermeasures for project with uh, potential risk in advance, and confirm the owners of the custom measures for corresponding risk items. The technical personnel involved in this risk assessment need to be participant in the discussions and the specific technical personnel need to be specified for each risk. It means if you have already known it is a risk, but now you don't know how to solve it, but you need to make sure which one can solve it and how to solve it and in which time point the solution should be uh, should should be should be done, and uh, then it is the migration solution output. We in this phase we need to formulate the migration solution based on the survey result, and project and pro and based on project analyze result, and uh, the risks evaluation of technical personnel. In the migration solutions, the detailed steps and the procedure of the preparations, implementations, and the closing phase should be specified. It's just because of what I said before. The more you do when you prepare, the less you need to do uh, during the deployment. So what is the most important in the things? Detail is the most important thing for the network migration. And uh, 
for the in, uh, implementation solutions, it is the same. You should make it more detail and detail. And uh, you should prepare the corresponding migration operations confirmation record tables. It means every record and everything you should need to do, you should write it down. And how to do it, you should make it be more and more specific. And uh, you sh maybe you can use a table, and this table so you can record uh, all the operation times and uh, confirmation result after operations uh, are performed, uh, and exception information. So you shall find that uh, maybe you need to do every step and uh, what operations you need to do, and uh, which time these operations should be done before it, so that you can you need to to know which one I need to do, which I need to do, so, and uh, sometimes it is. Uh, have uh, it doesn't has any relationship with you technical technical levels sometimes maybe this person have a good technical levels but sometimes they don't have a good step or good habit so you find that if you don't do any preparation your migration will be a mess and uh, just uh, 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 like I said before, if you have a uh, deployment solution, you should have a uh, rollback solution. Just uh, if the migration is failed, you can roll it back in a very short time. And uh, for the rollback solutions, it should be detailed and you should be make it more and more specific. Just uh, like the deployment procedures, for these procedures, it also needed to the step operation and time. And uh, you can make it more specific. This is just an example for you. And uh, at last, uh, maybe if you have the if you have the environment or if you have the chance or have the abilities, maybe you should know uh, solution verification and review. It's just uh, sometimes for the large scale and important immigration project. The environment must be set up in the lab for verification in advance. So you have a, just a, a real network to verify everything for the migrations. So you will find that the previous risk point will be tested and all for the entire uh, solutions. And this type of the verification in the lab environment, we will call it it a pilot of a show test. And in addition to the FOA solution verifications, a technical review of meetings need to be held held with the custom and the implementation party to verify technicals in the migration solutions, so as to understand actual requirement and difficulties of both parties and uh, solution problems face to face. But uh, for this type of, uh, and uh, I think for most migrations, you don't have a chance to do it just because sometimes maybe the customs, they don't have the t time for you to build a uh, lab and uh, or maybe you don't have the chance to simulate all the traffic that the Customs service will uh, will use it. so maybe sometimes it is uh, difficulties and uh, maybe we just talking it in theory. And uh, now it is the migration preparations. We need to pre to the our preparation and uh, before the migrations and uh, what things we need to prepared for migrations and we have the examples. We have some items maybe you should consider about it. For example, the environment preparations, it includes the hardware, software tools and spiral paths. And personnel preparations, for example, part A, part B and supervisors and procedure preparations, for example, how to Security, uh, your command, uh, and uh, what is your agreement, and uh, all aspects should be considered to issue migration success. And uh, you can find that um, we have a table 
just an example, what we need to consider for hardware, for software. So for example, for the software, you need to consider about uh, the version. You need to check the device version and in the connection version, mappings and uh, license. You need to check whether the authorized the license is available. So, and you need to prepare the, your scribe. Uh, you need to prepare the scribe for your migration. And uh, for example, for you for the tools, you need to consider about uh, the transportation tools. Uh, what is the vehicles? Uh, what is the learning tools uh, and uh, installation tools? Uh, and maybe you need to prepare uh, the test tools, uh, the network cable tester, network tester, and uh, optical power meter. All the things you need to consider about it. And uh, you can look uh, in these examples. What we we gave, just gave you some examples about uh, uh, the tools that maybe need to be prepared for. And also for the uh, personnel, we should know that uh, you need to consider about it, uh, which one needed to be considered about for this migration. So for example, so you, you are the deployment for the migration, so you are the part B, and uh, the customer is part A. After the, uh, after the migration, so maybe you need to let the part A to verify if the migration is a success. Right, so which one, which one, uh, which one is responsible for, for this, uh, for those works? Maybe you need to uh, verify it before your migrations, and uh, you should have a schedules I have already said before. So you have your schedules, you have your plan, and this plan should be very detailed, and maybe tables. For example, so the mapping table of physical and logical topologies before and after the migrations, and it will help helps your migrations. All right. And uh, then, now we enter the deployment phase. First, we have already stated before the migration, we need to do a snapshot before the migration. And uh, to uh, facilitate migration rollback and service comprehension after the migration. You need to take a snapshot of live network configurations and the data before the migrations. Back up live network configurations and you can collect all the data. For example, the traffic, the routing protocol status, the number of routers, all the things you can collect it before the migrations. And you need to test the service between the migrations to so each side that the server evolved in migrations are normal. You can find that before the migration, you need to do a backup app for the migration network just to, to let you have enough information to verify after the migration. And then it is the migration deployment implementation. Just to follow your plan. Step one, step two, and step three, what in every step, what you need to do and how to do them and before which time we should finish them just to follow your plan. And uh, if the migration not completed before the specific time, you need to do a rule bike, just like uh, the implementation. The first step is what, and uh, what is the step two, what is step three, and uh, how to do every step, just to follow your plan. So you find that uh, we only needed to follow your plan during the phase two. So that is why I say, this one is more, most important. And after the migration, you needed to do a test. Uh, how to test the same? For example, so you can simply test the network running status just uh, to, uh, just uh, to, uh, just uh, to collect uh, dynamic data on the living network and compare the data with that before the migrations. For example, so to check if the OSPF PLS number is the same and to check the root entries number is the same. And then maybe you need to, check, to do a survey test. Maybe you can just use the pink mind to test if the network connectivity is, is right. And if you have some software walls, you can check the delay jitter and the latency is right. And uh, 
at last, and I think it is the most useful way to check it is the use customs application to check if the application can work normally, if all the uh, application works normally, it means. And uh, I think uh, maybe you can you can say it is the 100% uh, right, but uh, most of the time it is right. If the customs applications works normally and with uh, just a normal number of application uh, client, you can see this migration is success. And uh, then, it, at last, it is the closing phase. It is the on-site attendance phase. After the migration is complete and the customs application survey test is passed, the network enters a special observation period just because sometimes the application service test is not a test, I mean, uh, have the same uh, uh have the same uh same uh same traffic or the same numbers of the client with the normal just uh, you test the application works normally but you don't know if when if if when the customs uh all the all the workers uh works normally in the working time if it can work normally Okay, during this period, engineers usually state at the customs site and observe the network running status to prevent unexpected faults. And uh, for this phase, how long it will last, it depends on the customs surveys. And normally it will just uh, one day. And uh, at last it is the migration acceptance. After the migration is completed and uh, no exception occurs, we need to provide maintenance training for the customs and hand over documents to the customers. So one thing, uh, one and two things we need to do. The first is transfer, uh, hand over the, uh, the document to them. And uh, the one thing is if it is necessary, uh, you should know that for some customers, they don't have the ability to maintain the networks, so they don't need to do a training. But for some customers, you need to teach them how to, for example, you change a new device for them, you need to take, uh, you need to teach them how to use the new device. And uh, the last is a case for the migrations. And actually, it's, it is a real case, but uh, I just try to simplify it for students uh, understanding it. So let's look at what is the migration case. And uh, I think this case is uh, for students, just uh, for them to, uh, to uh, just uh, to understand what is the procedure about uh, the migration case. So you'll find that we do some precautions. Well, first is the key point is to master migration process and method based on actually migration case. In addition to device configuration plans required by migration. And for students, they should discuss migration scenarios based on the migration process and output migration document based on project migration solution template. You find that they just have to let the student know what is migration. And those, those documents should include the following contents, the project survey and analyze, the risk evaluations, and uh, the migration solutions, and the task and check items, just to let them design it by yourself, just to let them know what we need to do during migration. And uh, this page is about uh, class activities and uh, I think we don't need to introduce it just because if you want to uh, activities like this, you can just uh, follow it. Just uh, you need to introduce the migration background for them. And maybe if it's impossible, you can classify them to different groups and you can, uh, you can let them do the migration, just the discussion for uh, just by group and then, for every group, they should output the summary document. Up, they uh, include all these those things. Okay, now let's look at uh, what is the case. 
now we have introduction to the early stage of the reconstruction project. Yeah, our company has a multiple uh, multiple branches that are connected to helicopter network through these lines, but it's just one list lines. And uh, now we have those problems. The first is the rate is low, and uh, now we need to improve our bandwidth to meet more ben uh, to meet some bandwidth insensitive service and uh, a single egress device and a single uplink curse are deployed at the egress of the branches and it shows that it is a single point of failure. So we need to increase the list line rate. If we uh, if we choose to increase the list line rate, you should know that it will be very expensive. And uh, for the campus network, I mean for the branches campus network, the standard alarm cost ratio is deployed, and uh, you should know that is another single point of failure. And the performance of cost ratios and egress routers cannot provide a good spot for increase and in users in branches. You should know that we need to upgrade our cost switch and egress routers. So that is the problem. And we will offer you an original topology. You'll find that it is simple. We have HQ networks and we have so many branches and every branches network is the similar. So we just use one branches network as an example. And you will find that it is a single list line and a single egress device, single call Device, uh, call layer devices. So what is the problem? You should know that. And uh, what is our target topology? So you, you will find that for the branch networks, we will use the two routers to uh, function as egress device and we'll have, we'll have two call switch. And uh, between the call two switches, we will use the CIS technologies to improve the HA abilities, uh, right. And uh, we, uh, except uh, besides the list line, we will add uh, new lines, and this line is in internet lines. And uh, we will build uh, AppSec VPN by using the internet uh, lines with HQs. And it shows that the bandwidth will be much larger, but uh, the squid level will not uh, like uh, the list lines, so we need to use AppSec VPN Technologies. Okay. Now let's look at uh, the target logical topologies. What we do? So the aggregation list used a uh, dual uplink to connect it to the CSS composed of call switches, and uh, the gateway should be configured on the WLAN if interface of the call switches. The CSS composed of call switch and link aggregation technologies are deployed to improve reliability. So where RP does not need to be deployed. You find that we have a logical call switch and for the aggregation layer, you will find that actually it is uh, easy chunk. It is. And uh, for the call layer, so we find that the call device service as the gateway of the intranet terminals. Static routers are configured to direct the traffic of different service to the list line and the AppSec VPN egress device. And uh, floating routers are configured for the, the back, backup. NQV, these technologies will configure to dedicate the availability of the list lines and AppSec VPNs. Static routers are associated with NQA so that traffic can be switched to the backup path when a link falls occurs. And uh, for the egress device, we will use two egress devices connected to the list line and uh, unite so to, just to carry different service. Traffic internet terminals access to different service is followed based on routers of the call switches. If the route changes, the traffic forwarding path changes accordingly. Now let's look at uh, the NQ designs. How to use the uh, NQA to meet our requirement. We will, we just uh, to uh, just assume we have uh, two type of service, uh, type A and type B. And uh, on the cost features, we will to use NQA to test uh, the connectivities uh, for the uh, type A service and type B service. 
and uh, you will find that the NQA uh, configurations will be this. We can specify the source interface, it means, for example, for the type A service, by default, it should be uh, should be pass. It shall be go on the this pass on the list lines. If this lines uh is done, you will find that the NQ will be the NQ will be filled just because we have already specified the source interface in possible for this NQA to test the connectivities by this link. It is impossible. So based on the NQA design, we can design our root backup. For example, so for the type A service, the default path is from the this router, from the left router, and uh, just to let the traffic delivered on the list lines. If the NQA done, we should know that this default this router is the default router uh, for the type A service, and uh, this router have already been associated with the NQA. Entries. If this NQA down, this root entries will be will that uh, will will doesn't take effects usually that. So these routers will be works. You find that for this router, this path is from the internet and uh, just uh, delivered by the absent VPN. That is the root back design. And for the type of B survey, it is the same. Now let's look at what is the migration solutions. We need to first. We need to deploy uh, the following steps. The first is we need to deploy a new egress routers and uh, connect it. Uh, and uh, wait a moment. And connect it and connect it uh, to the internet. And uh, we need to establish an apps VPN and config routers. Just uh, we need to finish our new egress device, and then we need to deploy two. New call switches establish the CSS and the routers and config the inter uh, classes aggregation between the two call switches and ingress routers. In this case, the call switches are not connected to the aggregation switch. And at last, we need to disconnect the original call switch from uplink and downlink switch device and connect the aggregation switch to the new call switch. And also, you will find that. We need to connect the list line to also to oh no 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 we don't need to do that. We need to connect the list line these routers to the new call switch. So let's look at the step one by one. The first thing is connect the egress router to internet, deploy a VPN with HQ and configure routers to network segment of type A and type B survey of the headquarters and then configure the return routers to the internet. And uh, the next step is deploy call switch and uh, build the CSS system and configure routers to network segment of type A and type B surveys and uh, configure the NQA. And at last is disconnect the old device and connect all the cable to new device. Okay, at last, maybe if you impossible, you should offer the migration document for offer this document, just a template for them, and then student will know how to do the document output. Now let's look at the quiz. The first question is, what operation can be performed located to verify risk before the migration? It shows that it is uh, built a lab on yourself. You can do this. And then it is another short answer to question. Which of the following must be Backup for the custom network before the migration. So you should know that we need to backup the static information and dynamic information before the migration. So it is necessary. Now, let, at last, let's do a summary for the uh, for the lessons. This lessons. The migration changes the network 
and it may affect the customer's service. So to reduce the affections, we need to do a migration. And before the migrations, we need to do a detailed preparations. And uh, we needed to do a survey and verifications and prepare each step in advance. So it will improve the success uh, possibilities for you migrations. So I, in my opinion, I always think the most important things for migrations is not your technical levels, it is your patient. Okay, now it is uh, this lesson, and uh, we have already finished it. And uh, in next training, we will learn about what is the what moment it is the uh, what moment it is the. It should be, we will have the Wexland utilization. And uh, one moment, this is, should be a theory. Yes, we will learn about what is the Wexland and the Campus Network utilization. And uh, I think uh, this part is very important and uh, you should pay more attention to this part. And uh, we will have a experiment and this experiment will be a demonstrator. So, Pay more attention to this uh, to lesson, and uh, I will meet you in next uh, Monday's training. Anyone have a questions? If you don't have any questions, then I think uh, we can finish our training and uh, have a have weekend.